Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's segment of Live Without Limits. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and today our show is titled Influencer Marketing in 2021, How to Work with Social Media Influencers. Because in today's marketplace, having a presence online is so important, and being able to influence People online is the best way to sell your product. And if you're not an influencer, then you have to find someone who is that can truly help you with growing and expanding your business. That means Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, even Instant Messenger, which you have on Facebook. Then, too, you can set up your chat box, which is when you have a Facebook fan page that you can create an interaction with people when they visit your fan page and ask them questions and start developing that relationship. In 2021, influencer marketing efficiency cannot be doubted in the slightest. Over the years, the said marketing strategy has evolved into one of the finest methods for businesses and marketers to reach their target influence. But what is influencer marketing and what are the factors that make influencers highly approachable? Influencer marketing is a type of social media marketing in which advertisers team up with individuals boasting an established fan base across one or more of social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and so on, for the promotion of a product or service. However, working with social media influencers isn't as simple a task as one may want it to be. In fact, there are several variables that determine the success rate of collaboration. And in this show, what we're going to do is shed some light on some important tips for you to learn and how to work with social media stars. And what I'm going to do is back up for a second because I think this is an important thing to recognize. You've been seeing a lot about Harry and Megan. And you remember Olivia Jane. Well, what happened, what what you're dealing with there is that they have a name. And that name is what they're basically basing that influencing market around. For instance, Gia Newley, or Olivia Jane, who is her mother, Lori Laughlin. How did her mother get to where she was? Well, she happened to be in a successful show, but her talent is relatively limited. And then when her ch- when her children got college age or were ready to graduate high school, what did she do? Instead of taking and, and making sure that they had the good education so that they could get good grades on the SC- on the SATs, what happened? They went the short route and looked for a way to get them in the best colleges, whether they wanted to be in, in college or not. And what was Gia Newley doing most of the time? Instead of studying, she was either printing on pretty clothes and dresses, and taking and doing photo ops with mom and dad, or she was on YouTube creating videos on how to put on makeup. So because she was 
at that ripe age where teenagers get on there and they will watch things like that and they will like it because she had a large following. She had companies like Sephora and some makeup companies like Mac or the, uh, I'm drawing a blank on it right now, but the, the idea was that they were willing to pay her to promote their products to her followers. And then when that whole thing broke, these people decided they did not want to be associated with her. You know, the fact of the matter is that who she was hearing it told was people her own age. That was a limited marketplace. You need to be able to have a following that's going to follow you throughout. So you need to know exactly who your target market is, how you're reaching them, how they're changing so that you can change your message just as easily as as time passes on. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about being a social media influencer. And you're seeing some people that in certain industries that because they're going out there and making videos or they're connecting with the right people and they're doing joint ventures, then that's creating the opportunity for them to become influencers within their network. A look at the following numbers might convince you why influencer marketing is one of the best social media strategies for 2021. As per a 2019 report prepared by social publication, 93% of marketers rely on influencer marketing. On average, a $1 investment in influencer marketing yields $6.50 in revenue. As per social media today, 87% of people decided to purchase after an influencer encouraged them to do so. Nearly four out of every 10, 39% of the marketers are considering increasing their influencer marketing budget. By 2022, the influencer marketing industry is expected to be valued at $15 billion Dollars, almost doubled its worth in 2019, which was $8 million. Well, let me quickly go through some things and explain why that's happening. That these trends were already happening because you had the millennials and you had Generation Z. The millennials grew up during the development of, of the personal computer and the laptops. So they normally know how to use a computer to do their shopping. Then you have Generation Z who were considered the digital age. And if you realize that you've got digital products online that you can buy and you can go online into e-commerce stores and buy products online, basically what is Amazon? Amazon is a website that has digital products, physical products, almost anything that you can purchase and ship out and have delivered. And this trend was go has been going on since really the very latter part of the, the 20th century, but started really growing with remote workers in the 21st century. And then when the pandemic hit, people were basically not going out and, and socializing so they were doing most of their shopping online. So being able and understanding exactly why as we come out of the pandemic because of the vaccine, that what's going on is you're going to still have people that it will be normalizing their lives, but there's, there's now know how to go online and purchase products and have it delivered. And you were seeing that more and more because especially during the Christmas season, remember when they would talk about Cyber Monday and how every year Cyber Monday kept growing in numbers because people were realizing that 
if you go to the mall and shop and you got all those packages to carry, it's easy to lose things. But if you get it delivered to your home, then it's far easier to know. And then you, that, that creates other problems. But at the same time, you can understand exactly what we're talking about and why social media marketing and becoming an influencer in that industry is a growing opportunity to create a job for yourself and get paid for it. So, therefore, it's high time for businesses to benefit from the potential of influencer marketing, which means boost of sales, increase brand awareness, get more eyes on their products and services, learn the type of content that appeals to social media users. Working with social media influencers, there are seven steps to follow, and marketers striving to increase return on investment and reach their target audience by using influencer marketing to follow the following tips and tricks. Now, think about it. Think about what it is that you really want to learn, and by learning to do so, you can help yourself to become exactly what it is that you want. So the first thing to look at is look for influencers whose interests align with your brands while searching for influencers and to endorse your product or service. Do not get tempted by their content right away. You need to collaborate with someone whose niche links with the staff or the stuff that you're trying to promote. Their followers will only be drawn to your product or service if they see that the influencer is genuinely committed to what he or she is promoting. Moreover, the same interests also prevent collaboration from looking fabricated. For example, an influencer promoting a vegetarian diet plan one day and then the KFC deal the next day would come across as dishonest. So reach out to those social media stars whose interests and outcomes align with the nature of product and service that you want them to promote. This is so important. And these are some of the things that people don't realize and don't understand and don't know how to incorporate because if you realize Jen Newley, what did she do? She was doing makeup. So the makeup companies knew that she was reaching people her age, so they contracted with her. And now that she's trying to get back into doing what she did, well, she doesn't have the same following in that they've they've gone on and found other people at that age. And the interest of the people who were the followers that she, that she was showing makeup to, their interests have changed because teenagers, young girls, are always looking to, for makeup. But as they start going into the workforce, as they're finishing up their college years, their interests change because now they're going out to work. And it's more than just the makeup. It's the clothes. It's the way they present themselves. You you have to be able to expand also. So understanding this and relating it all so that you as the influencer can always be relevant to the company that you're working with. Don't micromanage your influencers. The TV advertisements that most of us have grown up with watching follow an exciting approach. Such marketing campaigns and ad strategies a particular product or plan by person by personnel within the same organization promoting that particular product or service. However, when you rope in a social media influencer to enhance your business's reach and sales, don't dictate what they should upload. The reason is 
that these influencers have a better idea of the type of, of content that their followers interact with, as well as the ongoing trends that can be taken advantage of. While you are more than welcome to offer your suggestions, the influencer in question should have complete creative freedom. As you can see from what I've been talking about, this is actually a, a relatively new industry that has come out of working online and marketing online and digital marketing because social media, because of the wide variety of platforms that you're using, has grown tremendously. You can go on to Facebook and you can create Facebook Live where you're actually influencing people. So if you if you're not very good at speaking, then why not have someone else that that you hire in and, and as an independent contractor that can do that for you. That's the neat thing about having a business online is that you don't need to wear all the hats. And there's other solopreneurs that you can bring in that can also help you with, with marketing online. Aim for better engagement. On the surface, an influencer with 55,000 followers on Instagram might seem a better fit for increasing brand awareness than influencer with 15,000 followers, right? However, that's not the case at all. And here's the thing. What we're talking about is we're talking about joint venturing. And when you joint venture, there, it's, it's a specialized niche. And back in the day, it was joint venturing to, to cross-promote products. But now it's joint venturing that you're, you're, you're promoting cross-products, but you're also doing more than that. You're learning to collaborate. You're learning to bring in people from different aspects who have this different specialties and building up a bigger team than you would be having if it was just one or two people. And being able to be a referral, because I was on a five-day challenge where it was talking about joint venturing, and he was talking about your upstream and your downstream, meaning that you have someone that you've got to cultivate a relationship with for them to refer their clients to you. And then as, as you solve that specific need is creating a whole other set of needs. And then you're going to refer on those clients to someone else. Well, you want to be able to recognize that the person that you're working with is, has the kind of reputation and values that you do so that you can both, help each other to really expand and grow and be really good with each other. While better reach is impressive in its own right, it doesn't amount to much if people aren't interacting with the content. This is where micro-influencers and nano-influencers come into play. While only a few thousand people might follow such influencers, the engagement on their content unrivaled. This is because their fan base comprises loyal users who wouldn't hesitate to check out the promoted product or service. Avoid collaborating with influencers working with too many brands. And that's, that's really the gist of it, that, and this is why you need to, to kind of look at how you're going to be paying each other, how it financially it's, it's going to be beneficial to them to be either just be an influencer working with your product or maybe working with just two or three products rather than trying to reach all the people because, you know, all of us, the best thing you need to do is niche down within an industry. And although it's a smaller number, it can be an increase of, of income because your message is much tighter in what you're putting out. So 
it's not there to restrict the influence to only work with your business. However, it's also not wise to work with someone who has way too much on their plate. Influencers who spam their followers with way too many sponsored posts of items belonging to different brands on a regular basis aren't the ones you should be looking for. It's not recommended since the abundance of sponsored content can cause their audience to experience burnout and ignore the stuff being promoted. Here's the thing, that when you're promoting through email, email is one of the best ways to connect with people, but you need to be, to do a ratio of at least three to one where you're sending out information that is beneficial to the individual before you actually send them a sales pitch. So if they're working with too many people that they're constantly sending out a, pay, a, a sales pitch, then their number of opens in that emails are going to go down because people are going to stop responding to them and what they're trying to sell. That's why you need to make sure that you work with an influencer isn't as widely spread out and has too many people, people that are brands that they're working with. Strive to establish a mutually beneficial partnership in addition to Reimbursing social media influences financially. There's so much more that you can do for them. Invite them to your events. Make them host giveaways and other creative campaigns. Boost their credibility and whatnot. Make them realize that the collaboration opportunity will be as beneficial for them as it is for you. Only then will they take pride in representing your brand. Study the influencer and plan your budget accordingly. Before hitting up an influencer, do your research on them. Study their niche and that they specialize in their audience demographics, social media analytics, and so on. Also, it goes without saying that these metrics, along with the number of followers the influencer in question has, will help you plan the budget for the campaign. You should also note that many influencers opt for a commission structure rather than collecting a definite fee. What that means is what you're doing is literally setting up an affiliate type program where they get paid a certain percentage of a sales based on what comes through a link that you give them it to send their customers to your product. Keep tabs on the campaign's performance. Your role as a marketer doesn't end when a social media influencer uploaded a sponsored product to give your brand a shout out. One hundreds, if not thousands, of likes, comments, and shares should impress you. These metrics don't fully determine whether the campaign has succeeded or not. In order to gauge how the campaign is performing, you need to find out how many people visited the link that the influencer asked them to check out. Moreover, how many of these visits turned into sales or subscriptions is also a critical factor in determining the campaign success. And in short, measuring return on investments should be your priority. What we're talking about is this, that you need to have each influencer's link linked to a different or a different list 
in your email marketing campaign. Therefore, you can do split tests and you can determine which which influencers that you're working with have a market or have a how influential they really are with their niche that they're working in. So social media marketing growth in recent years has been nothing short of impressive. Nowadays, many leading brands and businesses rely on influencer marketing to boost their sales and increase the following. An ideal social media influencer helps a business by posting content relative to, to both their interests and the brand's ideology. Content should reach an impressive number of people and attain reasonable engagement in order to increase the in return on investment of the investing party. I, I hope your introduction to influencer marketing through this show has turned out to be valuable experience for you and helped you to understand just how important influencer marketing has become today. And let me talk a little bit more about digital marketing and just how important that influencer marketing is to it because it's, it's no longer just the fact that you are able to build a business today online. It's how you interact with people. And you can't do everything yourself. You can't wear all the hats. If you try to, what is going to happen? Well, then you're going to be spreading yourself out so thin that you're just going to just take the fact that you're, you're, you're working from home or that you're doing what you're doing because we all have strengths and weaknesses. If we concentrate on doing what we really love to do and, and actually bring in joint venture partners and outsource those things to them that they really love doing, then as a team, because it's so important today to have a good team in place for any business, even with an online store. If you're in a brick and mortar store, you still need that online presence because if you don't, you're literally leaving money on the table. And today, part of digital marketing is understanding how to use social media and influencer marketing to, to influence people because in email marketing, what you're doing is you are setting up a relationship with influencer marketing. You're creating that relationship because you're getting someone that knows a lot about your product and can promote it because the people who grew up with the MTV era, they're used to watching short videos. Like, if you notice, what is these, these music videos? What happened? Every entertainer, everyone who, who, who makes albums, and some people have even been discovered by the short videos that they put online. Uh, for instance, how did Justin Bieber get, get his start? Well, Usher saw his video when he was online as a kid. So, remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up for coaching, and we can work with you to help you to understand how to incorporate digital marketing and influencer marketing into your business. <laughs> 